Welcome to Sam's Talk. Russell winds it, feeds it back across, Chuck in, scores! Brady Kachuk makes it 2 to nothing. Welcome to Sense Talk. My name is Brandon Plant and I'm your host. We have a very, very special video for you all today as I take a look at some defensemen your Ottawa Senators may select at 7th overall at this year's NHL Draft. But before we get into all of that fun stuff, just a couple things. Firstly, if you see stuff moving in the background, I got a fan on me right now. It is like almost 50 degrees outside here in Ottawa right now. It's really, really humid, so I do apologize for that distraction in the background. And as well, I apologize for being MIA the last little bit. I know I've been missing in action the last couple of weeks. I have a really, really good explanation. Life got in the way. I had a graduation. I was job searching. I had to deal with stuff with my apartment. Um, There's just a lot of stuff going on, so I really do apologize for that. Um, but we're back. We're back. We got this video coming out today. On Monday, I got a forward draft preview coming out as well, so stay tuned for that. And a lot more draft coverage coming in to next week. We got a live stream for draft night as well. Lots of stuff, so stay tuned for that. But just wanted to give a bit of explanation as to why I've been MIA as of late. Not on purpose, just unfortunately sometimes you got to do life stuff. Sometimes life just gets in the way, and you gotta take care of it, but it's been taken care of, and now we are back. So with that, let's get into today's video, as we preview the defenseman for this year's draft, and my goodness, the draft this year is full. I mean, full of talented, frankly, elite defensive prospects. So it truly only makes sense to kick off our draft coverage with the defenseman, and my goodness, as I've already mentioned, a lot of good defensemen in this year's draft in Las Vegas. So in this video, I will preview the top six potential defensive prospects the Sens may target in this year's draft in no particular order. Keep that in mind, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a draft ranking. This is not, uh, you know, projecting where people are going to be. This is just in, um, frankly, completely random order what I think about each player. I think all these prospects are so, so close other than the first guy, Levshinov, that you cannot go wrong with any of them, okay? I mean, Yakumchuk maybe is a little lesser on the higher end compared to, you know, the other players like Dickinson, Booyam, and whatever. Perrick, of course, as well. Um, I'm sure I'm just getting comments. I missed somebody there, I'm sure. Um, but the point is, there's a lot of good defensemen in this draft, so it only makes sense to start with them. So, as I already mentioned, there's just one exception in terms of the blue liners that really stands out. It is, of course, Artem Levshinov. This guy is by far the most well-rounded and highly sought-after defender in this year's draft. He's six foot two, 209 pounds, and he's right-handed. The Belarusian defenseman uh, this year played with Michigan State in the NCAA. In 38 NCAA games, he compiled nine goals and 26 assists for 35 points. Not too shabby whatsoever. Thanks to this fantastic year with Michigan, the defenseman also is a Hobie Baker nominee. That's, of course, for MVP of the season. Now, Leshinov is a tremendous skater, making him, frankly, an elite two-way defenseman who quarterbacked last year Michigan's power play and was also a top penalty killer in the USHL, making him an attractive asset to any National Hockey League team thanks to the fact he can play in all situations. He's a full 200-foot player who can dominate on the offensive side of things and the defensive side of things. And I don't know about you, for a defenseman, that sounds pretty good to me. Now, speaking of his time in the USHL, before this year with Michigan, he suited up in 62 USHL games, compiling 13 goals and 42 total points. Pretty impressive stuff for a young defenseman who's only played a couple years on North America ice. Remember, he's coming over from Europe, much larger surface. It's obviously a bit of an adjustment for a defenseman to calibrate to a much smaller rink. So it's very impressive that Leshinov, and of course with his skating abilities, shouldn't be shocking, but of course, nonetheless, it is impressive of how fast he was able to transition to the North America style of game and frankly dominate at it. Considering his skating abilities and smooth hands, Leshinov is expected to be a first-pairing star defenseman who can play strong at both ends of the ice. Chicago does have interest in the stud defenseman at second overall, so it's pretty unlikely that, you know, Ottawa will get a shot at him, but hey, you just never, never know. Now, like I already mentioned, after Levshinov, this is where the list really, really gets tight, and you can have your own personal debates and opinions, because frankly, the rest of the defensemen I'm about to discuss 
are pretty close with one another. So after, you know, Leftchenov goes, this is where the guessing truly, truly begins. All the names, you know, listed below that I'm about to go through realistically have a shot to go anywhere in the top 10, at the very least, top 10. 15. Anton Selyev this season in 63 games with Torpedo Nizhny Novgorod of the KHL put up three goals and 11 total points with a minus nine rating while also putting up a pair of assists in five KHL playoff games. Now I know what you're thinking, Brandon, what is this guy even being part of the conversation? What is this guy? First round pick, he doesn't even have more than 11 points. Well, hold your horses, clean up the spit off the ground and give me a chance to explain Anton Selyev. This guy, frankly, it's probably a top five pick in this draft. And once again, while those numbers may not sound impressive, they're actually really impressive. Keep in mind the KHL is the second best league for hockey in the world. You got some really, really good talent over there in the KHL. And he was playing this year in the KHL. He started the year at 17 years old. I mean, my goodness, I don't know about you. When I was 17, I don't think I would have been able to play against grown men who play in the NHL and around Europe and whatever, AHL too, wherever. Um, you know, at 17 years old, you're playing against some really, really good players. And look, as I just mentioned, this was a record setting season for Anton Siliev as he broke the regular season KHL scoring record for a defenseman under the age of 18. So once again, those numbers are actually pretty impressive if you look at the context. Now as well in the MHL, the KHL's, uh, you know, minor league system, sort of similar to it's the Russian equivalent to the CHL, I suppose. Um, the Russian defender also played in Russia's, you know, developmental league there in the MHL this year, where he actually won a championship. He won a championship while compiling three assists in 10 total playoff games. So he also has a bit of a championship pedigree, which never hurts. Once again, um, this is a guy that isn't known for his offense. Well, once again, he can bring the offense. He's known for his offensive ability, so he's got a good offensive IQ. But he's more so known for his size and skating abilities. So on top of the offensive potential that Siliev could bring for any, you know, club as he's shown in the KHL, uh, he's also tied for being the tallest eligible player in this year's draft class. So once again, this is a guy that, of course, has the offensive instincts, but he's not known for that. He's known for the physicality and the skating abilities. Once again, the left defenseman is a hulking, huge 6'7 and 211 pounds, making him physically ready to step in to an NHL lineup of any NHL club next year. He also led Torpedo in hits last year as well. So the guy could throw around the hits. You know, a rookie, 17, 18 years old in the KHL, leading, you know, a, a, a club that went to the playoffs in the KHL in hits just shows how much of a physical tenacity type of player uh, Anton Siliev is. This is a guy that's going to bring some boom, some boom to your, you know, back end in terms of physicality. He also has a great shot, which of course... Uh, ties into that offensive ability that he brings uh, for sure every single game. Now, Bob McKenzie, who's really respected in hockey, this is a guy that, you know, usually nails these draft rankings. This is a guy that knows his stuff, has consistently ranked Anton Siliev within the top three on his board throughout the year. Now, I mentioned that Siliev, if you look at draft classes or rankings, I should say, can be as high as top three to as low as like in the bottom 10, in the top 10. So, um, it really kind of depends on your personal viewing of the player and the positional need for the certain you know club in that position or that overall. Um, but this is a guy that's going to go in the top 10 for sure, likely top 5. And most scouts, as I already said, note Selyev skating, particularly for a defenseman of his size, is tremendous. And he can also play both sides. So this is a guy that brings some offensive ability, of course, but he's a physical guy. Huge defenseman who can play on both sides. I don't know about you. I've been watching hockey for a long time, and I know NHL GMs love defensemen that are huge, that are similar to Zeno Chera in size, that are not afraid to bring the boom in terms of a shot, and of course in terms of physicality. And once again, when you're that large and you can skate that well, that's only going to do wonders in the NHL. The transition game uh, for him from the KHL to the NHL will be flawless. And while he is signed with you know the KHL club until 2025-2026, um, some NHL teams are going to have to take that into account on whether or not they want to draft him this year. That will not hurt his development. That's not a big deal whatsoever. Um, it's only going to be a good thing for his uh, you know development and his potential. And he will likely be with an NHL club within the next year or two. There's a decent chance he likely leaves the KHL early. I'm sure there's some sort of opt-out clause in, the, you know, in that contract where maybe he can even leave for an NHL club as soon as next season. Um, but once again, 
Siliev is a complete package for any team looking for a well-rounded defenseman. He's got the skating abilities. He's physically ready to go right now. He's got a good offensive instinct. He's a tremendous skater. Um, and with all this in mind, I compare him to star defenseman Victor Hedman. I think his offensive ceiling is there with that size, the skating ability, um, just the transition ability, um, and the way he can defend and, of course, attack. This is a guy that can do it all. This is a guy that you know, can go on your power play, can go on your penalty kill. He's kind of a Swiss army knife, and those are so, so valuable. So Siliev is a guy that reminds me of a star defenseman like Victor Hedman, who's not flashy with his point getting, but will get the points for sure. Now, Sam Dickinson out of London is a player that, frankly, as we'll talk about in a couple of minutes, has been heavily linked to the Ottawa Senators, and frankly, for good reason. The left-handed defenseman certainly has the size of an NHL blue liner, hawking over opponents with a height of 6'3 and 194 pounds. He'll certainly be able to put on some more muscle as well with that frame, which will only make him even more of an effective defender. Dickinson, for good reason, is ranked within the top eight of all scouting agencies throughout the entire year. This is a well-rounded prospect. And this year in London, as you can see in terms of well-roundedness, 68 games with the London Knights of the OHL. He put up an impressive 18 goals and 52 assists for 70 points. He also had 13 points, four goals in the playoffs during the London Knights' run to the Memorial Cup Finals, where they would ultimately lose to the Saginaw Spirit in the championship game. While Canadian junior hockey is known for being a bit more loose defensively, which often allows more goals to go in, still, putting up over a point per game in just her second season of action is an incredible accomplishment for Sam Dickinson. The Knights' defender isn't just an offensively talented blue liner, as I kind of alluded to a second ago. He can also play a very strong defensive game, thanks to his physical presence and solid skating abilities, making him one of the more well-rounded defensive prospects in this draft, sort of similar to Anton Siliev we just spoke about. Dickinson also, in you know interviews after the pre-draft meetings with teams, mentioned how his pre-draft meeting with the Sens was very intense and that he wanted to do well in that meeting since there has been, as I already mentioned, a lot of noise about him being selected by Ottawa. He also said this on possibly being drafted by a lot of senators, and I quote, It would be really cool. The dynamic of being able to stay close to home would be nice. It's a Canadian market with unbelievable fans. You see the front office at the Combine, and it's a very well-run organization. It would be an absolute honor. Hell yeah, would Sam. Hell yeah. And I want to note that he said it's a very well-run organization in just under a year. The Sens clearly have kind of shifted the narrative around the organization, because let's just say... I don't think many people would have said the Sens were a well-run organization even at this time a year ago. So um, that's just great praise there from a, a top prospect. But in terms of Sam Dickinson and his potential to be an Ottawa Senator, he's a great, great defenseman. This guy screams Ottawa Senator to me. Physical, puck mover, good skater, very, you know, even at both ends of the ice. He's strong at both ends, doesn't really have much weaknesses. He's physical as well. The stick checking will get there. This is a guy that I watched a good amount in the OHL this year. One of the only prospects I really got to watch a good amount of. Uh, of course, because a guy like in the KHL, I can't watch as much, NCAA, etc. This is a guy I got a lot of viewing on. Um, and this is a guy that's going to be a fantastic defender in the National Hockey League. No matter where he's drafted, he can play on your power play, penalty kill. He can really do it all, but he's more of an offensive guy. So I don't really see him in that penalty kill role. I see him more as an offensive guy with a physical edge to his game. But nonetheless, if Ottawa drafts him, they will be very, very lucky to do so. After a strong season with the University of Denver in the NCAA, Zeev Buim has shot up the rankings of all draft guides and is now expected to be taken safely and potentially the top half of the first 10 selections, and for good reason, Zeev Buim has skyrocketed up the rankings. This season, he put up 11 goals and 39 assists for 50 points in 42 NCAA games. For a freshman defenseman who's a bit undersized to put up more than a point per game in a physically demanding league like the NCAA is nothing short of impressive. Really, really impressive. And by the way, uh, Zeev Buim helped Denver secure an NCAA championship this year, which uh, I don't know about you, sounds pretty good to me. Sort of similar to Siliev and a defenseman we're going to talk about in a second, Perrick. Um, there's some winning uh, pedigree as of late for this guy right here. At six foot tall, 183 pounds, Buim will have to put on a bit more muscle and size to be able to handle the everyday rigor of the NHL game as a defenseman. But his offensive IQ and strong, I mean, I can't emphasize this enough, his strong skating abilities provide a great opportunity for an easy transition over to the pro game for Zeev. Once again, he's accelerated year after year after year, and that's why he's ranked 
so, so high and frankly, one of the deepest defensive draft classes we have seen in some time. Now, what really sticks out to me about Z Bowie and his game is his defensive abilities are quite strong. And this might sound a little weird, but they're quite strong thanks to his offensive instincts as he's able to read plays and break up attacks, frankly, rather effectively and has been noted to be a very strong stick chucker. So he's got a very strong, you know, hockey IQ overall, but his offensive instincts allows him to read the play and break them up like that. But overall, this is a guy that can move the puck effectively and is a great skater. He could quarterback any team in the NHL for their power play. When I watch this kid, I see Adam Fox. I see Quinn Hughes. This kid is going to be an absolute stud in the National Hockey League. And just with a bit more development over the next couple of years, he can reach those levels, in my opinion. Watch out for Z Booim. This is a kid that skyrocketed up the rankings. He is the complete package. And this is a player that Ottawa would be very, very lucky to get. Widely regarded as one of the most offensively gifted defenders in the draft, the right-handed Zane Perrick has been unstoppable with the Saginaw spirit of the OHL this past season as he put up an absurd, I mean, this is actually crazy, 33 goals and 63 assists for 96 points. 96 points. Four away from 100 in just 66 games in the OHL this season while leading the way to Saginaw's first ever Memorial Cup Championship. This offense isn't coming out of nowhere, by the way. For example, in his first season with the Spirit, he broke the OHL's all-time goal record for an under-17 defenseman. So the guy can score and has been scoring for quite some time. The defender has been raking in the accolades as well as of late, most notably being named the OHL's most outstanding defenseman this year and as well winning the CHL Defenseman of the Year as well. With a smaller frame of 6 foot 181 pounds, Perrick at times has looked lost in his own zone and has been outworked by opponents due to relying more on stick checking and skating abilities to cut off the attacker angles. But thanks to his tremendous transition and skating abilities, these defensive errors should be mitigated in no time. Once again, this is a raw young defenseman. It takes time to develop, but the tools are there for this guy to be an absolute stud. With some development in his own zone, this kid could become the next great offensive defenseman in the NHL and reminds me of a young Eric Carlson. He screams, screams of Eric Carlson. Carlson was undervalued and underranked when he was taken by Ottawa in the first round in the mid-round, okay? Zane Perrick won't go in the 14, 15, 12, 13s. He'll go in the top 10, but there is a chance he drops to the bottom half of that top 10, which frankly, in my opinion, big, big mistake because he has the offensive abilities. This guy is a play driver. This is a guy that looks like Adam Fox, Quinn Hughes, Eric Carlson. Think of an elite offensive defenseman like a Kale McCarr and any other elite offensive defenseman you can think of in NHL is a guy that Zane Perra can compare to because this is a guy that in my opinion with just a bit more seasoning in you know the OHL and then some pro hockey time the AHL can become a very very strong defender he's got all the tools to be a star a star that will dominate the league for years to come the skating is there the transition game is there um, the offensive ability is there you just have to kind of round in your defensive game and kind of work with what you got once again carlson not known for you know his defense by any means but year after year after year after getting drafted he got better so this is something that you know uh, Perrick will have to work on but with all those natural tools that he's got i don't think he's gonna have any problem with it and frankly like zip Buim, this is a guy that can of course be a power play quarterback and can you know easily be in my opinion, your leading point getter for the team when it's all said and done. This is a guy that I think is going to have an absurd amount of assists in his prime in the NHL. Um, the potential for this kid is so, so high. I think this is a kid with the highest ceiling, but also the lowest floor in terms of if he hits and does as well as we think he can, he might be a steal. He might have probably should have went top three. But if his defensive game can't round into form, then, you know, he's going to be definitely on the lesser end of the guys here. But once again, this is a prospect with so much potential. And I'm excited to see how he does next year, no matter where he ends up. Rounding out my uh, draft preview for this year's NHL draft for defensemen is Carter Yakimchuk. Yakimchuk is six foot three, 194 pounds, and he is a right-handed defenseman that played in 66 games this past season with Calgary of the WHL, compiling a flashy 30 goals and 41 assists for 71 total points. Yakim Chuck is an intriguing blue liner who presents a nice mix of physicality and offensive ability. His right-handedness makes him an attractive target for the Sens as well, due to the lack of depth the Sens have at that position. 
According to Ben Jordan from Smack Scouting, Yakum Chuck has a nice blend of size, skill, and aggressiveness that allows him to be a force all over the ice. His instincts are great, and he joins the rush when he feels he can contribute to the play. He holds his own in the defensive zone with his size and ability to separate puck carriers from the puck to quick start offense the other way for his side. His physicality allows him to be effective at times in his own zone, but many draft reporters such as Stephen Ellis of the Daily Faceoff say that, you know, or they believe anyways, that under pressure in his own zone, uh, you know, Yakumchuk definitely needs some improvement in that regard. Now, what separates Yakumchuk uh, from, you know, Perrick and Buiam, of course, is his size. This is a guy that can throw around the body. He's got an NHL size already. He's a bit of a taller defenseman as well. And tall right-handed defensemen, as I mentioned with Siliev and I mentioned, of course, with Lefchinov, um, are so, so valuable um, in the National Hockey League and for good reason. They're a commodity. There's not a lot of them. So Jakub Chuck, for that reason and many others, of course, like his, of course, elite talent, has him in the top 15, but he very well may go in the top 10, uh, even as high as 7, potentially, for Ottawa, uh, depending where other blue liners go. Once again, right-handed, point-getting, physical defenseman, are um, frankly a dream for NHL GM. So I don't expect Jakub Chuck to last past the top 15. And while the point totals are eye-grabbing enough, no doubt about it, what truly caught my eye is his jump in penalty minutes between this year and last year. The defender went from 31 penalty minutes last year to 120 this year. That is, I don't have to tell you, a massive jump. Look, Playing with flair is good, it's great, it's what you need from a physical defenseman. It gives you some momentum, it can really energize the team and the arena. But, you definitely will want him to cut back some of those penalties as he progresses over the next few years. You gotta cut back, you gotta be more disciplined. You can't have a defenseman, especially likely in your top four, who will be playing key minutes in the box so often. So, once again, that is a bit concerning, but you like to see a defenseman with flair and energy and emotion um, and I have no doubt that a defenseman like this Yakumchuk who's played of course for Team Canada as well at the Helenki Gretzky Cup he's a, a you know of course a player of high regard you know with a physical touch and a limited offensive potential potentially with Yakumchuk he could become the steal of the draft for anyone picking in the top 15 um, just once again cut back on those penalties and you'll be good to go, my friend. So with that, thank you all so very, very much for watching. Let me know in the comment section down below, who do you want your Ottawa Sanders to take out of the guys I just mentioned? In fact, on top of that, how would you rank the prospects I just spoke about? Let me know in the comment section down below. I look forward to responding and commenting and replying and having conversations and debates as I always do in the comment section down below. But yeah, besides that, thank you once again for watching. I'll see you all on Monday for the forward draft preview. We got a lot of fun forwards to preview. We'll see you all on Monday night. But besides that, thank you all for watching. I'll see you Monday night. Go Sins Go.